Hi, this is Mr Evans. This video is going to look at a question on finance, uh, break-even analysis, and the question is assess whether conducting a break-even analysis will ensure the survival of Tom's business. Okay, so um, when I'm reading a question, before I've even read the case study, I can read a question like this, and I've already got a gut reaction as to uh, the answer that I'm going to give to this question and that gut reaction is partly uh, driven by this phrase here uh, will ensure Okay, ensure what does that mean? It means guarantee it means it's a hundred percent going to happen And I immediately know as soon as I read this question the answer is going to be well Conducting a break-even analysis is not going to ensure the survival of Tom's business. Okay, that's the first thing I'm going to know Okay uh, break-even analysis is very helpful, yes, and if I know my specification, I know the advantages and disadvantages of conducting a break-even analysis. And I also know that to, uh, for a business to survive, conducting a break-even analysis is just one part of um, a business plan that will comprise of many, many things. An operational plan, a human resource plan, um, maybe a marketing plan. So I know from the off, my gut instinct to this question is that conducting a break-even analysis isn't going to ensure the survival of Tom's businesses. Most likely it will be a combination of things that make the survival of uh, Tom's business more likely. So that's my gut instinct as soon as I read the question. As usual, it will probably help you more if you pause the video here have a read of the case study and think about how you would answer the question what's your plan for answering this question and then you can have a look at how i've gone about answering it um, there's not necessarily any right or wrong way to this but i can show you how i've tried to approach the answer just before we get into it i've picked these comments um, or these uh, descriptors of a top band answer from the mark scheme. So a top band answer is going to show a depth and range of knowledge that's precise and well selected. It's going to have analysis throughout, applied effectively to the context considering a balanced range of issues. And the, it, there's going to be some evaluation in this uh, answer that's going to make a judgment or provide a solution that's built effectively on the analysis that you've already done. It's going to show balance and it's going to have a clear focus on the question as a whole throughout. So I'll try to stick to these colours when I'm highlighting my case study as I'm reading through it. Blue for kind of knowledge, selecting information, yellow for analysis and green for judgment. So you, you can see um, you can uh, see the different components of my answer. Um, I'm going to use um, the same colours to highlight the case study. Um, in this case, when I'm reading the case study, what I'm doing is I'm trying to find out information in the case study that tells me that break-even analysis is useful. I'll highlight that in uh, green. And I'll have a look at any other information um, that might be helpful in looking at what else would be useful in ensuring the survival of Tom's business in yellow. Okay, so Tom had just finished his university fashion degree. Now you could probably highlight this in either color because this could be interpreted as, well, Tom definitely needs to do a break-even analysis because he's a student, he's not run a business before and therefore conducting a break-even analysis will be particularly helpful for him um, as he doesn't have any experience in industry etc. Well you could actually argue that well if he's just finished his university fashion degree, it's not a business degree, does that university fashion degree help him? You know, has he got any experience in doing a, a break-even analysis? In which case um, the break-even analysis might just be wrong. So you could argue that either way, but certainly that might be useful information we could include in our answer. Tom found that many students he spoke to wanted uniquely designed t-shirts at affordable 
prices. Tom developed a technique of dyeing t-shirts that meant each one had a different pattern on it. He decided he would buy plain t-shirts from a supplier and then dye them himself. Okay, simple business plan. Tom's friends indicated they would pay £12 for a t-shirt. Right, I'm going to highlight this. Tom found that many students he spoke to Okay, well, how many students is that? And he's speaking to them. Then Tom's friend indicated, okay? Why do you think that these uh, I've highlighted in yellow? Well, these are indications that Tom hasn't uh, done much in-depth market research. I'm a bit concerned about the level of market research if he's just talking to people and then asking his friends, all right? Um, it's an indication that maybe he needs to do a bit more marketing and therefore even the break-even analysis isn't going to help him if he's um, conducted scant market research. Okay, but uh, here's some information that's going to be useful uh, for the break-even. People are going to pay £12 for a t-shirt. Estimated the variable cost for producing each t-shirt would be £7. Okay, now if I know my... Um, if I know my break-even, I know that the formula for calculating break-even is fixed cost divided by contribution per unit. If I know contribution per unit, I know the difference between the selling price and the variable cost allows me to calculate the contribution per unit. Um, and therefore, if I see the fixed costs, I'll be able to calculate the break-even. And look, uh, he needed to hire a workshop and estimated his fixed cost would be um, 1,600 per year. So you need to know all of the formulas that are listed in the specification because AQA do like giving information like this and they're expecting you that they're implicitly telling you to do a calculation. Um, okay, uh, Tom thought that he could sell 45,000 units per year. Right, again, if I know my, uh, my formulas, I know that the margin of safety is equal to the predicted sales minus the break-even output. So now that I know this, I'll be able to calculate Tom's margin of safety. Tom thought he could sell 45,000 units per year if he had a sales team and were to use a website to target students around the country. So again, here's some more information we could use. If he had a sales team, all right? If he were to use a website to target students, all right? So it's it's clear that if he's going to have a sales team, he's going to need a human resource plan. If he's going to have a website to target students, he should probably have a marketing plan as well. And those things will come together to um, help make the survival of his business more likely alongside the break-even analysis. So you can see I'm just collecting information here that say, well, that's going to help me with my conclusion because I already know what it is that break-even analysis alone isn't going to ensure the survival of Tom's business, but his business will be more likely to survive if he's conducted um, uh, various activities um, that we've talked about. However, Tom soon found his initial cost assessments were somewhat low. Okay, so this is again just hints that his, maybe his market research hasn't been that good. Uh, he would have to pay an extra £1 for each plain t shirt. The cost of a suitable warehouse was 12% above uh, his estimate. Nevertheless, Tom was convinced the process of conducting a break even analysis would ensure the survival of his business. Okay, so. Um, Again, if you haven't done so, probably you'll get more value out of this if you now just stick together a little bullet point plan for how you'll answer the question. Um, you can see that I've highlighted the case study uh, by looking at what the question was first and then reading the case study uh, afterwards. And um, I think that's a very useful way to read the case study because it helps you read it and look for the important information that you'll need. Um, so. I was highlighting the case study in the two different colours, why break-even analysis will be effective in green, other factors in yellow, but now I will highlight as I'm going through my essay, the uh, knowledge in blue, uh, analysis in yellow, and my judgement in green. So uh, I've started off with a uh, definition. Now, the examiner's report says so you don't have to do this, um, but I want to 
put the examiner's reports also say that it's really important that you explain the concepts throughout the essay and doing it at the beginning isn't a bad way of doing that. So I've started off this essay with a definition of what break-even is. And then my second sentence, conducting break-even analysis is a important component of any business's startup plan. Now this is what I would call a signpost to the examiner. I'm saying that um, it's an important part of a bu any startup's business plan, but you know, an important part, I'm not saying it's going to ensure the survival of any business. So that's a little signpost to my conclusion. Now, um, Tom would have found that conducting his break-even analysis very helpful as his cost assumptions did not hold true. So this is part of that analysis um, that is about application to the case study. And therefore his initial calculation that he would break even at 32,000 sales. Right, what have I done there? I've used the information in the case study up here to calculate um, his initial break-even output using the formula that we discussed, fixed cost divided by contribution per unit. This, putting this in, is really helpful for the examiner. Okay, you've got to remember that the examiner could be marking up to 40 questions at a time and just putting in this number, the numbers stand out. Look how many numbers you can see in that paragraph. Numbers stand out and if there are calculations to do, the examiner will have been trained to look for those numbers. So they can just tick straight away when they see you putting in those numbers. Okay, so it's very helpful for you to use any numbers put in calculations because the examiners will know the answers to them and when they see them in your essay they stand out really clearly and they can mark you with good application. Nevertheless, going back to my essay, um, his initial calculation was that he would break even at 32,000 sales, which proven to be optimistic. When Tom recalculates his break even point with the new data, he will find that his new break, his break even output has increased to uh, 44,800 t shirts. Okay, so again, I'm using the numbers to form my chain of argument. His margin of safety has reduced significantly uh, to just 200 t shirts. This seems to be very risky, so Tom may use his break-even analysis to take action. So I'm developing a chain of argument now. All right, I've said that uh, the break-even analysis, the break-even analysis, is useful because he can now calculate his margin of safety and 200 t-shirts when he's ex is. The margin of safety when we've predicted sales of 45,000. That's not a large margin of safety, so he needs to do something. He could assess what the impact would be of increasing the selling price to increase revenues, or he may decide if he can find a cheaper supplier of t-shirts or suitable warehouse closer to his initial budgeted figure. Okay, so he wants to either increase revenues or cut his costs somehow. Um, that will help him to reduce the break-even figure. Whilst these activities would not ensure the survival of the business, okay, that's a judgment, such actions would make it more likely to break even and therefore ensure and therefore survive its first few years of trading. Okay, now I've highlighted this, um, so hopefully you can see how I've built a chain of argument using the case study and linked the, each paragraph clearly back to the question, which is this bit about having a clear focus on the question throughout. The next paragraph I've highlighted in um, italics because I wrote the first, the bit that's not in italics in um, about 15 minutes, just over 15 minutes, um, imagining it was a 16 mark question. I came back and added this, uh, it took me about three minutes to write this, just to show that maybe if it was a 20 or a 25 mark question, I might want to make another point about why break-even analysis is useful. Okay, so let's just have a quick um, uh, look at this. So using break-even analysis may also make it more likely that Tom would be able to attract more investment to the business. So I would say this is uh, knowledge about break-even. One, one of the benefits is it can be used to attract investment. There is no information that Tom will be able to finance the startup himself using the information from the case study. Therefore, he may need to acquire external funding from a bank manager or investor, okay, building a chain of argument. Both would want to see a return on their outlay and therefore would wish to see evidence of careful financial planning uh, on Tom's behalf before investing. 
Therefore, the break-even analysis may be essential to get the business off the ground in the first place. Maybe I should highlight that in um, green. All right, I'm saying that to get the business off the ground, the break-even analysis will be important because it might be used to attract investors. Okay, so I've got a second point there on why break-even analysis is useful for Tom's business. It's not going to ensure the survival, but it's useful. Okay, so on the other hand, so this is um, a phrase that I would highlight in green because um, we're showing the balance now and kind of considering that balance range of issues. Conducting a break-even analysis could be very difficult for Tom as he has no experience of business. Okay, uh, very difficult for Tom, no experience of business and there is no information as to where he collected his cost est estimates from. Um, okay, so I can highlight all of that. That's using information from the case study. In addition to that, Tom's market research seems to have been limited at best. He spoke to people at university and asked his friends about the sales price. So I'm building up a chain of argument here, explaining um, why the break-even analysis won't be that important. Conducting more in-depth market research will probably help Tom assess the viability of his business idea. Okay, so what else is going to be useful alongside conducting a break-even analysis? Um, and allow them to get a better picture of both costs and revenues. So it's important to make sure that a new business of market research, A, that will make his break even more accurate as he's got accurate costs and revenues, but also just finding out what customers actually want is going to be useful for him. There are also other financial tools that Tom could use to enhance the chances that his business could survive. Okay, so this is a bit of knowledge. Uh, for example, conducting a cash flow forecast. This would allow Tom to understand the timings of inflows and outflows, which a break-even analysis would not consider. So, um, yeah, building a chain of analysis. Finally, there is little evidence that Tom has undertaken any human uh, resource planning information from the case study. If he were to employ a sales team, this would be a very important activity that could be critical in enabling his business to survive and prosper. Okay, so hopefully you can see what I've done there. I've taken a number of little bits of information from the case study to build um, a paragraph looking at, you know, why break-even analysis um, is more looking at what else is needed to ensure the survival of a business, a new business like Tom's. So what am I going to do in my conclusion? Well, I want to make a judgment, provide a solution, built effectively on analysis, showing balance with a clear focus on the question throughout. Well, hopefully I have clearly focused on the question throughout because I've constantly talked about survival and I've been focused on um, Tom's business. So. Let's have a look at my conclusion. In conclusion, the process of conducting break-even analysis has been very important for Tom's business. So that's my conclusion, it's been very important. It's not going to ensure the survival, but it's been very important. As it is highlighted, the business's margin of safety is significantly lower based on the new cost data, and Tom can take action to see if it would be possible to reduce the break-even output. Okay, so what have I done here? Well, this is my uh, judgment. It's been important um, and it's built on analysis. I've now analysed this point about the business's margin of safety. That's not new in the conclusion, it's just pointing out what, what the, the, the reason for my judgment is. Um, what's the solution? Well, Tom can now take action to see if it would be possible to reduce the break even output. So I've got a solution uh, in there for Tom's problems as well. However, nothing can ensure the survival of any new business. Um, I don't know if that's great English. It reads a little bit like a double negative. However, no activity can ensure the survival of any new business. All right, the key word here is ensure. I'm echoing the case study, and this is part of my judgment. To enhance the chances of Tom's business surviving, the break-even analysis should be part of a comprehensive business plan that includes detailed market research, a human resource plan, and the cash flow forecast. This is all built effectively on my analysis and is my solution, which is that he shouldn't just do break-even analysis 
um, his business is more likely to survive if he's got a detailed, comprehensive business plan.